Okay, as we start chapter four, we're gonna talk about right triangle trig. So this first section should be very familiar to you based on the things that you looked at in geometry. All right, chapter four, um, values of trigonometric, that should be ratios. The word trigonometry actually means triangle measure or triangular measure. Okay, in this chapter, we'll progress from reviewing the side length ratios of right triangles that you saw in geometry to looking at those ratios as functions of x and investigating their graphs. So, let's get started. Trigonometric functions. Let theta be an acute angle. So, that's one thing that's important to remember. Theta is an acute angle in a right triangle, and we're going to abbreviate the sides opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And we know the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. Refer to the length of the side opposite theta, the length of the side adjacent to theta, and the length of the hypotenuse, respectively. So the opposite and the adjacent can change sides based on wherever theta is. Okay, so the trigonometric ratios that we're going to look at, um, you may remember the three, sine, cosine, and tangent, but we're also going to look at their reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So if we name these trig ratios by their sides, the sine function will be the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is adjacent over a hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, I'm sure that you have your way of remembering these. When I was in high school, I remember learning this little country saying, some old horse caught a hen taking oats away. So that helped me to remember those. A lot of you guys now learn Sokotoa. Sokotoa. And that can also help you remember those. There's a few others, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Okay, so we're going to add three more that you may not have heard of yet. And these are their reciprocal functions. And if we remember what a reciprocal is, where we just flip the fraction around, um, that's exactly what these are. So the cosecant, abbreviated CSC, the cosecant of theta, is the reciprocal of sine. So this will be the ratio of the hypotenuse over the opposite. The secant function, abbreviated SEC, is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So that will be hypotenuse over adjacent. And then cotangent, the reciprocal of tangent, will be adjacent over opposite. Okay, so each of these are reciprocals of each other. All right, so these new ones, the cosecant, secant, and cotangent functions are called reciprocal functions because that was, that's what they are. They are reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. So using that idea, there's another way that we also want to be okay with recognizing these. The cosecant of theta, we can also state as 1 over the sine of theta. The secant of theta is 1 over the cosine of theta. And the cotangent of theta, we can think of as 1 over the tangent of theta. So it's exactly what we did in the chart above, taking the reciprocal of the ratios but they are also reciprocals of the functions like we have here in red. So let's put these into practice. We want the exact values, and that means no rounding, we're gonna leave them in fractions, of the six trigonometric functions of theta. So as we look at the first one, theta is clearly marked. So we have theta, opposite would be our 21, adjacent would be 20, and the hypotenuse opposite the right angle is 29. So let's list our functions. We're gonna do sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. And the reciprocal of sine is cosecant of theta. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And the reciprocal of tangent, that's the easy one, cotangent of theta. 
So as we set these ratios up, if we look at the sine theta, that's opposite over hypotenuse, so that'll be 21 over 29. Then the, secant, the cosecant is really easy, we just reverse that. Do take the reciprocal, and that's 29 over 21. The cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so 20 over 29. So the secant would be 29 over 20, just the reciprocal. And then the tangent would be opposite over adjacent, which would be 21 over 20, and the reciprocal would be 20 over 21. So these again are exact values. We don't have decimals. We're just going to leave them as ratios, and none of them are able to be reduced. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at a triangle where we know that the cosine of theta is 2 fifths. So we're going to draw this triangle. So we have a right triangle, and I'm going to label theta right here. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'm going to label those sides. The adjacent would be down here at 2, and the hypotenuse here at 5. So if I want the exact values of the remaining 5, I'm going to need to find the opposite. So I'm going to use Pythagorean Theorem, which means that a squared plus b squared is c squared. So I'm going to plug in the side lengths that I know. a squared plus b squared will be 2 squared equals the hypotenuse, which is 5 squared. So a squared plus 4 is equal to 25. And then I know that a squared is 21. So a has a side length of positive root 21. And I'll label that. Okay, so let's set up our remaining functions, the sine of theta. I have the cosine of theta, which I already know. I'm just going to put that in there to complete the pattern. The tangent of theta and the reciprocal functions. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So cosine being 2 fifths, I can very easily do the secant. I know that that's 5 halves. Done. The sine of theta. So when I look at theta, opposite over hypotenuse will give me the square root of 21 over 5. So then the cosecant would be the reciprocal, 5 over the square root of 21. Now we are going to have to rationalize that. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of that fraction by the square root of 21. And that leaves me with 5 root 21 over 21. And that's the cosecant. Then the tangent of theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So that would be square root 21 over 2, which is fine. And then I'm going to take and reverse that and make that 2 over root 21, but rationalize. Multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 21. So I have 2 root 21 over 21. And there are my six trig functions based on knowing the fact that theta has a cosine ratio of 2 fifths. Okay, solving right triangles. So when we say solve a right triangle, this means find all angles and all sides. That would be completely solving the right triangle. Okay, so if we look at the triangle over here on the right, I have 42 degrees. I know that the hypotenuse is 18, and I know that my adjacent side is x. So if I want to find the value of x, I'm not trying to solve the entire thing. Um, with this one in particular, I guess we don't have to find all angles and all sides. This one, they're just asking for the value of x. Sorry about that. So find the value of x. I'm looking for the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse. Well, the trig function that relates those would be cosine. So I'm going to take the cosine of 42 degrees, and that's adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 18. 
And now I treat this um, kind of normally. I just go about solving. I'm going to multiply both sides by 18. So 18 times the cosine of 42, you're going to have to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So you want to go into mode and radians will be highlighted, but you want to change it to degree mode because you're going to put in the cosine of 42 degrees. And so when you do that, 18 times 42 degrees will give you 13.4. And it wanted to the nearest tenths place, so just one decimal. Okay. Then in example four, a competitor in a triathlon is running along the course shown. Determine the length in feet that the runner must cover to reach the finish line. So the hypotenuse is really what we're looking for here. So again, we have the angle of 63. I have the opposite 200 and I have the hypotenuse that I'm looking for. So the trig function that relates opposite and hypotenuse would be the sine function. So I can say that the sine of 63 degrees is equal to 200 divided by x. So when I have 200 divided by x, what I'm going to do is multiply. I can think of cross multiplying or multiplying both sides by x. I'll have x times the sine of 63 degrees is equal to 200. And then I'm going to divide by the sine of 63 degrees. That is a number. It's OK to divide by this. Just like if you were multiplying 6x equals 200, you'd divide by 6. So we divide by the sine of 63. And again, make sure your calculator is still in de degree mode. So 200 divided by the sine of 63 degrees will be 224.5, and we are in feet. Okay, very good. So a couple examples on solving right triangles. Again, not where we have to find all angles and sides. That's coming soon. But where we just have to find specific pieces. Okay, and speaking of that, so now when a trig value of an acute angle is known, so when we know the value of the angle, the corresponding inverse can be used to find the measure of the angle. So when I know the ratio and I want to get the angle, then I can use the inverse. Okay, one thing that we want to make sure of before we go any further, there are inverse trig functions and there are reciprocal trig functions. So please make sure we know the difference. They are not the same. The inverse trig functions will be sine inverse, cosine inverse, tan inverse. You can see these in blue or in little sub print above the buttons on your calculator above sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, reciprocal trig functions are not on your calculator, but these functions, again, are your cosecant, your secant, and your cotangent. Okay, so in this example, we're going to use a trig function to find the measure of theta. So now we have two sides, and we need to find theta. So according to where theta is, I have the opposite of 26, and I have the adjacent of 11. So I know that the tangent function will work here. So the tangent of theta is equal to 26 divided by 11. And so what we want to do here when we're trying to find the angle measure, we're going to take the tan inverse of both sides. That undoes tangent. And so theta will be the tan inverse of 26 over 11. So you're going to need to go to your calculator. Please make sure that it's in degree mode because we want degrees right now. And then you're going to hit second tangent where you'll see tan inverse. It opens up the parentheses. And then you close them and your angle measure should be, actually let me write this down, second tangent and then your theta value will be 67 degrees. Good. Okay, now as we move into some applications, we're gonna to need to know the differences between angles of elevation and depression. So an angle of elevation is the angle that's formed by a horizontal line 
and the observer's line of sight to an object above. So if you look over here to the right, you have an observer. There's the horizontal line from the line of sight and then to an object above. So here is an angle of elevation made from the horizontal and the line of sight. Then vice versa, we have an angle of depression. This one's a little trickier. It is formed by, again, a horizontal line and an observer's line of sight to an object below. So if you're in a plane as the pilot, there's the horizontal line and the line of sight to the object below. So that's your angle of depression. So if you look at this from geometry, if you remember, the angles of elevation and depression are congruent because they are alternate interior angles. When you learned about two parallel lines cut by a transversal, you learned about things like alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles, vertical angles, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so knowing that, let's look at example six. So a ground crew worker who is six feet tall is directing a plane on a runway. The worker sights the plane at an angle of elevation over here of 32 degrees. What is the horizontal distance from the worker to the plane? So we're looking for that X value. Now, 32, we're looking for the adjacent, and we have information about the opposite. So that tells me we're going to use tangent. So the tangent of 32 degrees is going to be the opposite. Now, the opposite from his line of sight is actually 150 minus the 6 degrees. The plane is 150 degree, or 50 feet from the ground, but then we're going to take off 6, and we're going to use 144 as the height. I need to get my calculator. So we'll have the tangent of 32 equal to... The opposite, which is 144, over the adjacent, which is x. So 144 over x. And then we're going to multiply by x. x times the tangent of 32 degrees equals 144. Then I can divide by the tangent of 32 degrees. And I get x equal to, let me make sure my calculator is down in degree mode, which it's not. And so the, I'm going to take 144 divided by the tangent of 32. And I get 230, what did it say to round? It didn't really, I guess, 230. 0.45 feet. Okay, so that would be the horizontal distance. All right, let's look at this next example. So a hot air balloon that is moving above a neighborhood. Okay, so here's my hot air balloon. Not very good, but you get the idea. Is moving above a neighborhood. It has an angle of depression of 28 degrees to one house. So here's my house down here. And the angle of depression down to this house, remember it's from the horizontal down, is 28 degrees. And then there's a 52 degree angle of depression to a house down the street. So now I have another house and it's gonna make an even bigger angle this is going to be 52 degrees. If the height of the balloon is 650 feet, so from the ground, it's 650 feet, there's the ground. Estimate the distance between the two houses. So I actually need that distance there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually pull these triangles apart. Also, keep in mind we have some um, alternate interior angles that we're going to point out. 
So the first triangle I have is to this farthest house. And I know that this is 650. And it had a 20 degree angle of depression. But alternate interior angles tell me that this angle is also 28 degrees. And I'm actually going to get this whole big side and we'll call this Y. So I'm going to go get Y. So I have 28 degrees opposite over adjacent. That's going to be tangent of 28 is 650 over y. So y times the tangent of 28 degrees is equal to 650 and when I divide by the tangent of 28 degrees my length y is 1222 feet I believe. So there's one of my triangles. So then my other triangle, the smaller one with the steeper angle to the other house. So this is still 650 feet above the air. This angle of depression was 52. So I know that this alternate interior angle is 52 as well. And we'll call this side Z. So actually, let me go back over. We'll label this one or 1,222. And now we're going to go after this little side right here. So as I look, I have opposite and I want the adjacent. So again, tangent of 52 degrees is equal to 650 over Z. So Z times the tangent of 52 degrees equals 650. Divide by the tangent of 52. And Z is equal to 507 feet. So this is 507. So if I want to know what X is, then I have to subtract the 2. So I'm going to take the 1222 minus 507. So the distance between the two houses is 715 feet. Okay, excellent. All right, now we're going to solve each triangle, and this is what I was talking about before. This means when we solve each triangle, we want all the angles and all the sides. So as we look at our rounding, guys, and how far to go with this, we're going to round the side lengths to the nearest tenth and the angle measures to the nearest degree. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, if I have... Um, in example A, I have triangle XYZ with angle X at 35, XZ at length 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually remember my rules of the, a triangle and the fact that angle Y, oops, angle Y has to be 180 minus the sum of 90 plus 35, the other two angles. So that's minus 125. And so angle Y is 55 degrees. Okay, so now I actually have all of my angles. I have 55 degrees for the third angle that I'm missing, and I'm missing two sides. So then I can go for X. I'm going to go for X next. So I have 35 degrees. And the opposite over the adjacent, I'm going to use tangent. So I will say that the tangent of 35 degrees is going to be the opposite. I'm sorry. Yep. Over the adjacent, which is 10. And then 10 times the tangent of 35 gives me a side length x, which when I multiply that out, X is 7. Okay, and the last thing I need is my Z value. 
So to find z, I'm going to take the, um, the adjacent, which is 10, and the hypotenuse, which is z, so that's cosine. So the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to the um, adjacent, which is 10, over the hypotenuse, so that's z. So as I solve, cross multiply, z times the cosine of 35 degrees is 10, divide by the cosine of 35 degrees, and z is going to equal 12.2. So I have one more, the last of the angles and two sides. Okay, if you're watching this video, I would pause it right now and try to do B on your own. Okay, so we have JKL, that triangle. I have no angles, just two sides. And I do have a right angle. I know one of them is the right angle. So I'm actually gonna pick J to be theta. And I'm gonna start with that. So I have, if J is my theta, 11 is going to be my opposite and 8 would be the adjacent. So I'm going to let that lends itself to tangent of theta, which is opposite 11 over adjacent 8. Now, if I need to find the angle, this is where I can take the tan inverse of both sides. So theta is equal to the tan inverse. 11 of 11 eighths. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Second tangent and then 11 divided by 8. Theta should equal 54 degrees. So now that I know that that's 54 degrees, I can take and find actually, well, let's stick with doing the trig functions. Okay, let's do the trig functions. So if I want to find k, if we focus on finding k, so I know that that's the hypotenuse, so I have, I can use opposite over hypotenuse or I can use adjacent over hypotenuse. Either one, I'm gonna use the sine function. So the sine of 54 degrees is equal to 11 over k. And as I multiply, k times the sine of 54 degrees equals 11. We're going to divide by the sine of 54. And that gives me 11 divided by the sine of 54 degrees is 13.6 for k. Good. Okay, and then to find angle L. So to find angle L, I actually end up calling this one beta, just to have a different letter. And so I know the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. I can use any trig function that I want. So I'm actually going to use um, tangent because they gave me the 8 and the 11. So I can say the tangent of beta is equal to 8 over 11. So once I take the tan inverse, beta is equal to the tan inverse of 8 over 11. I hope I didn't cut out too much of a step there. And as we round to the nearest hole, that is 36 degrees. All right, excellent. Okay. We're going to finish off these notes with a little throwback to something from geometry. You might be a little rusty on it, but it becomes essential, essential, essential for this chapter. So, special right triangles. These should be familiar to you guys. Special right triangles, of course, your 30, 60, 90, and your 45, 45, 90. So, the first thing we want to do is remember the ratio. You probably remember a 1 to 2 to root 3 or 1 to root 3 to 2 or something like that and root 2s and 1s. And those are all true. So to have the angle measures of 30, 60, and 90, there is a specific relationship that goes on with all of our 
um, with all of the triangles that have that relationship. So opposite the 30 degree angle is the one X. That could just be one or it could be one times X. Opposite the 60 degree angle, that's the next largest, that's gonna be root three X. And then opposite the 90 is always the biggest, there's my double, 2x. So that's a relationship among the sides that's always true for 30, 60, 90s. Now 45, 45, 90s were a little bit different. With these two, we know that it is a 1 to 1 to root 2. I'm not sure if you remember that or not, but with a 45, 45, 90, the ratio of the sides is 1 to 1 to 2. So my opposite my legs would just be x, but then opposite the hypotenuse, pi hypotenuse is root two times x. So keeping those ratios, we're gonna finish up by understanding what the values are for the trig functions of some of these degrees and why they don't change. So these are special right triangles. We agree the relationships don't change between the sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use them to find the following, and these are things below that are never going to change all the way through trig. The sine of 30 degrees, well let's look at the 30 degree angle up top, opposite over hypotenuse. So 1x over 2x, those cancel, we're left with 1 half. So the sine of 30 degrees is always 1 half, always, always. The cosine of 45 degrees, so let's go to our 45, 45, 90 triangle. And the cosine of 45 degrees, well there's my cosine, or my 45 degrees. Cosine is adjacent, so that would be an x over a root two x. Now the x's are gonna cancel, I have one over root two. And so then I rationalize. So the cosine of 45, is always, always, always root two over two. Let's look at the tangent of 60. If I go over to where I see 60, right in here, 60 um, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that would be opposite root three over, or I'm sorry, root three over x, and adjacent would be one. <laughs> excuse me, one. The x's would cancel, and so the tangent of 60 degrees is always a square root of three. Okay, the cosecant of 45 degrees. So the cosecant is the reciprocal function of sine. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and there's different ways that you can remember this and do this, I remember that the cosecant, cosecant, and it's going to be a 45, is hypotenuse over opposite, always. So I don't even have to worry about um, that. So the cosine of 45 degrees, let's take a look. If I look across from the 40, hypotenuse is going to be root 2x over the opposite, which is x, and that's just root two. So the cosecant of 45 degrees is always root two. The secant of 60, well secant is opposite of cosine. So the cosine we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I want hypotenuse over adjacent. So if I look at the 60 degree measure, opposite, or sorry, hypotenuse, which is 2x, over adjacent, which is x. Those cancel, and the secant of 60 degrees is always, ooh, always 2. There we go. And the last is the cotangent of 45. So tangent, the reciprocal function, is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent 
will be the adjacent to 45 degrees and the opposite. So if we look at the 45, 45, pick a 45, adjacent is x and opposite is x. So the cotangent of 45 is always 1. Okay, that takes us up through 4-1. Thanks, guys.